In this video, we will see the data path and control unit designed for UART receiver and transmitter. And then the demo video will be shown for the UART project. There are three tests that we can do is the first one is SQ display. Basically, when we press the keyboard, the UART receiver will receive the value of the key and then display using seven segments. It will display the hexadecimal value of the art key key pressed. And the second one is game controller. We are using the UART transmitter as a game controller to play a game in our computer. And finally, we will have a loopback loopback test whereby we connect the RX pin and also the X pin of the transmitter together. And whatever that the transmitter send on the CPLD will be received by the receiver on that CPLD as well. That's why it's called loopback. Now let's first look at the design for the UART receiver. The CPLD in this project has a clock speed of 50 megahertz. And we want to design a receiver at 115,200 bits per second or we convert into a clocks per bit how many clocks for each how many clocks for each data bit is calculated using this formula clock speed divided by the bit rate so the clock speed is 50 megahertz and the bit rate is this and therefore we get 434 clocks per bit it means that the length of a data bit will be about 434 clocks per bit this is the timing diagram for the UR receiver this is the RX so when we are about to receive data initially we are at either step the either bit uh, and then we have a start bit followed by eight bits of data bits and finally a stop bit when we are about to re receive a data the counter here will start to count it will count until 216 which is the width of this the width of a bit divided divided by two and minus one because we are using zero indexing when we are at 216 we know that during this time right here we will be at the middle of the start bit and when we are at 216 we can output an equal signal like this an equal pulse and then we can use this to determine whether we are about to reach this reach this point And the and for the next counting, the clock counter will count from zero to four three three. Four three three is just the four three four minus one because we are using zero indexing. When we are at four three three, we output a pulse again. And after the pulse right here, we know that. We should sample the bit zero because we, we are now at the middle of the bit zero. And same thing goes for the bit one. We start counting again from zero to 433, output a pulse, and then sample the bit one at here. The counting continues until 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 here. For this part, the counting is a bit longer because 
we need to count half a bit and also one bit. So all together we have 1.5 1.5 bits to count. And so the length of this should be 434 plus 217. And then we minus 1. We minus 1 because we are using the zero indexing. It is also useful to have a bit counter to, to count which bit we are about to receive. For example, in the start step, we are expecting to receive bit zero later on here. And then after sampling this bit zero at here, we are then expecting to get bit one again. After sampling bit one, we go to increment by one to get two, three, four, five, six. Sampling bit six and increment to seven. After sampling the bit seven, we go back to zero again. Next, we have a finite step machine to keep track of the step. Initially, we are at either step. And when the, the RX send the start bit, we transition into the start step. And after, at the middle of the start bit, we transition into the data state because we are expecting to get the data bits during this stage. And finally, after sampling the bit 7, we transition into the stop state. And to instruct the final state machine to transition from data to stop, we can use this, this pulse here. This pulse is equal to this pulse is logic one when the bit index reaches the MSB bit. With the with the discussion so far, we can see that we need four components. The first one is the shift register to sample the middle of the bit. The next, the second one is the clock counter. The third one is the bit index counter. And the fourth one finally is the finite state machine. The first component that we are looking at is the shift register. The shift register has a right shift register inside and with a flip flop. Let's talk about the shift register first. It has a synchronous reset. By the way, this L here means that the reset is active low. Besides, the shift register has a shift in. This is the input. The input. We just want to shift in the RX. We want to sample this RX. So when we look at here, the RX is this, the data to be received. And the, and the shift register also has shift enable. This L here is to indicate that the shift enable is active low. And the shift register should sample the IRX bit during it should sample when it should sample during the middle of the bit. And how can we know if we are at the middle? We can use this signal here. We can delay it by one cycle. Then we know that we are at exactly middle of the bit. And using this delay pulse, we use the positive edge to 
sample the to to tell the shift register to tell the shift register to shift, which is equivalent to sampling during this edge. And this is why the clock for this shift register is equal the O equal delay by of the delay by one cycle. So here, uh, equal and then delay by one cycle. And for the next question, we should ask is when should we sample the bit? We should sample the bit during the data step. However, we need to delay half cycle because if we look at the diagram, when we are at the middle of the start bit, we also have a pause here. If we don't delay the if we don't delay this that is data, then what happened is we might Accidentally shift the shift register during this positive edge. Therefore, we delay the I stat is data by half cycle, by half cycle like this, so that when the we are not affected by the pulse here. Lastly, because this is a shift register. When we shift, when we are sampling the IRS here, the error output will be changing, and we should, and for the output, we should expecting only one change per packet of data, and this is done by using a flip flop to store the final receive byte from the once the once a packet has completely received and the right time to store this parallel output is when the step is stopped and we also delay by one cycle because because when we are at the Stop, stop, stop step here. We have a pulse like this. We are sampling the bit 7. And to avoid this pulse from triggering the flip flop to store the data, we delay the, the stop like this by half cycle to avoid this positive edge here so this is why we delay by half cycle the next component that we are looking at is the bit counter this bit counter is to keep track of the bit index under normal condition without the reset the the bit index will increment by one it will increment by one during the O equal is equal to one delay by one cycle. So it, it is here. O equal delay by one cycle during this edge, then the bit index will increment. Then goes for bit one here during this positive edge. It will increment by one like so and so the question now is when we should be allowed to increment this bit index so if we look at here when we want to avoid the increment we can use the asynchronous reset this asynchronous reset is active flow Looking at the timing diagram, we see that the bit index is incremented during the data step when we 
sample the data bit. Therefore, one of the condition to enable the bit index incrementing is during the data set. However, to avoid the incrementing during this pulse, we should cut out the first half of this first half of this data. So we are using this as the enable, right? And we need to cut out this first half cycle. And this is done by this is done by taking an end with the start signal delay by half. And this is the I state is data. I state is data looks something like this. If we invert this this signal, then we get this. And when we taking an end with this two signal, we essentially eliminate the half cycle here, half of the first cycle here. So with the discussion so far, the asynchronous active low reset should be this. And by the way, when we are de designing the active low reset, the question that we should ask ourselves is when we do not want to have the reset. So we don't want the reset when the global reset is one. And we also don't want the reset when the state is data. Data and recall that we are using this to cut off the first half of the data, first half of the first cycle of the data. And lastly, we will be comparing this bit index with data width minus one to output the O equal and MSB. Recall that when the bit index is the MSB, then the output O equal MSB will be one. The third component that we are looking at is the clock counter. The clock for this flip-flop is just the clock because this is a clock counter. Under normal condition without the reset, the clock count is simply incremented. Now the question is when we should not increment this counter. The first obvious one is the when the since this is the active law reset, the question that we should be asking ourselves is when we don't want to reset this counter. So the first condition is when the global reset is one because this is the active law reset. And another condition to reset is when when the clock counter has reached certain value here. So if we look at the timing diagram, when the counter reached certain value like 216433650, the counter will be reset back to zero. They will be reset. And we are using the equals pulse here to reset. We delay the equal pulse by half by half a cycle so that on the next positive edge of the clock the counter can be reset without any without any whole time violation. Another condition when we don't want the counter to reset is during the start 
until the stop because during this because during this entire duration the clock will be active and counting however to avoid the clock counting during here we will we don't want it to increment to one during this clock cycle therefore we again need to cut off this the first half cycle so that we can escape this first positive edge and this is done by delaying the start by half cycle and then we taking the all with all of this therefore you can see that we have this expression right here the stat equal to start delay by half cycle and then all with taking an all with all of this and to select different value for the reset we use multiplexer for example, during the stop step, during the stop step, the reset value should be after 650. Therefore, using the multiplexer, we select this. This, this value is equal to 650. And when we are in the data step, when we are in the data step, the value before the reset is 433 therefore using this multiplexer we can select this this value is 433 else else the reset value the value before reset is 216 and using this multiplexer again we select this because when we are in the start bit this signal will be zero zero therefore we are selecting this which is equal to 216 the fourth component that we are looking at is the control unit the control unit is made of a finite state machine Initially, we are at the idle state. As long as the Rx is 1, then we know that there's no data to receive yet, so we stay in the idle state. And if we, and if we see that the Rx suddenly becomes 0, then we know that we are about to process this start bit therefore when the rx is zero we go to the start step at the start step the clock counter will start counting so you can see the clock is counting until 216 it will output a pulse and then we delay the pulse by half cycle so that during this positive edge the finite state machine will check if the rx is still low so it will check during the equal signal and whether the rx is still low if it's still low then we know that we should proceed to data state and if is not low then if is if rx is not low then we know that it is is probably a glitch in the system and not a signal to start therefore we go back to the idle step when we are in data state 
we will encounter quite a few of the equal paths. See, when we are in the data set, we will see quite a few of these paths. However, what will eventually trigger the finite machine to transition from data to stop is when we have this pulse accompanied by the equal MSB pulse because we are at the bit 7. After sampling the bit 7, we should transition into the stop step, which is why the condition is like this. We need to have equal pulse and also equal MSB pulse before we transition into the stop step. When we are at the stop step, the counter will still be continuing to count. So here, six, the, at the stop step, we are counting from 0 to 650. As long as we are not at the 650 yet, we stay in the stop step. When the counting has reached has reached the six five zero, then the finite state machine will check if the state is if we still have data to receive. Then the Rx here will be zero because it is a start bit. If this is a start bit, then we will go to the start state. Else, we will go back to the idle state and wait for any new data. Here is the hardware for the UI receiver project. The first thing is the active flow power of the set. This active flow reset consists of the user active law input and then the this part here is the low pass filter to filter out the noise from this push button and finally we have this diode to discharge the capacitor properly and to display the received data in this project, we use uh, two seven segment display in order to display this, in order to display the received data. Besides, this will be sending data from computer to the CPLD. We will use a FT2T2 module with the TX pin connected to the IRX pin of the CPLD. And we also need to connect the ground between the module and CPLD. And take note that the VCC is not used. And also with this module, we can select, we can select either 5 volt or 3.3 volt. In our case, in the CPLD is using 3.3 volt. Therefore, we choose, we put a jumper here to choose 3.3 volt. In the description below, I have uploaded the Verilog code for implementing the components discussed just now. And for the code, an additional thing I added is the is to display the received data. The received data basically will be converted into the display on seven segment using using this ASCII display. Next, we will discuss the UR transmitter. This is the timing diagram for the UR transmitter. This is what the transmitter will send. So initially we are at either state. Let's say some event like key press or whatever we want. 
like when we want to send data, we can press a push button or whatever. Then we are trigger the transmitter to output the start bit. During this start condition, we will be we will start counting the clock counter until the 433 before we reset it back to zero. When we are at 433, we will output a pulse. And this pulse is useful to tell the, to keep track of the bit index. Like for example, when we are, after we have sent the bit zero, we, up, we use this pulse to increment the bit index. And the uh, counting and shifting out the data will be continued until the MSB. When we are at the stop step, the counting is a bit longer because we want to limit how fast the data is transmitted. Here is the calculation to get this value. We are using a CPLD with 50 megahertz clock speed and we want to send 31 characters per second which is equivalent to 31 packets per second. The clock needed for one packet is the clock speed divided by the repeat rate. Therefore, we see that one packet should have this amount of clocks. And also we know that in each packet, we have one start bit, eight data bits, and one stop bit, which is equivalent to 434 clocks plus eight data bits. So eight times 434 clocks and with one stop bit. And Therefore, the clocks for one packet is this. If we solve this, if we solve these two equations, this equation and this equation here, then we will find that the stop bit should be this long. The stop bit should has should have this amount of clocks. Therefore. The value is this. We just need to minus one here because we are using zero indexing counting. We also need a step machine to keep track of the step. Initially, we are in either step, but once we press a push button, then we will transition to start step and using. This I stat is start. We check if the current stat is start. If the current stat is start, we can output a pulse like this to load the data to be transmitted into a shift register. And then shift out the data during the data state. We shift the shift register and take the right most bit as the OTX and we continue shifting until the stop step. Basically during the start step we will shift out the data loaded during the start step using the pulse from the clock counter we can know when to shift a bit for example, when we are at bit zero and we have this pulse, then we know that it's time to shift by a bit to output the bit zero, bit one, and then bit two, and so on until bit seven. When bit seven, when in bit seven we encounter a pulse like this, then we know it's time. To transition into the stop because we have a equal and MSB 
it got an SD pulse here along with the pulse from the clock counter. So with the discussion so far, we can see that we need four components. The first one is the shift register to shift out the TX. Then we need a clock counter. And the third one is the bit index counter to keep track of the bit index. And the fourth one is the stat machine to keep track of the current stat. The first component that we're looking at is the transmitter shifter. This shifter is a right shift register with the ability to have shift enable and load enable. And when the, we use the we call that we use the start pulse to trigger the loading of the data to be sent. So this is the data to be sent. We use the start pulse to cause the data to be loaded into the shift register. So the start pulse look like this. When we have a start pulse, because we are in the start state, we will use a low, low to high detector to output this pulse. And this is the pulse to enable the loading. And if we delay this by half a cycle, we can use this pulse to as a positive edge to load the data. To load the data to be sent. For the shifting of the register, we will use the equal pulse. So this is the equal pulse. Whenever we the whenever the clock count reaches a certain value, then an equal pulse will be generated. And we want to shift when the we want to shift during this when the clock counter becomes zero again. So we use the equal signal delay by, by one cycle. We use this as the positive edge to trigger the shifting. And so the shifting should occur during the data state. However, to avoid the shifting occur due to this pulse. We need to delay the. We need to delay the I state is data by half cycle. By half cycle because by doing so we avoid the shifting due to the equal pulse here. The transmitter shifter also has two multiplexers because we are not always outputting the shifting out of the shift register to the OTX. For example, during the start state, during the start state, we should output zero and not the data here. And if it's not start state, for example, in the idle state, we should output one. We only output this during the state is data. And if the state is during the stop, then both of this signal will be zero and we are outputting one because the stop bit needs to be logic one. The second component that we are looking at is the transmitter bit counter. This bit counter is actually the same as the bit counter in receiver discussed earlier on. The clock for this bit counter is the equal pulse delayed by one cycle. So as you can see, this pulse here can use to instruct the bit index to increment by one. The next question is when we should avoid the incrementing of the bit index. 
we can avoid incrementing using this asynchronous reset. This L here means that the reset is active low. So one of the conditions where we don't want the reset is when the global reset is logic one. The second condition where we don't want the reset is when the state is data. So as you can see here during when we are in the when we are in the data state, we want the bit index to increment after each shifting out of the OTS. But we don't want the increment during this during this pulse here. We only want to increment during the pulse in the data step. And because we want to avoid this pulse, because that we are using a delay pulse like this to trigger the bit index incrementing. And now we don't want this, we don't want this initial pulse to, uh, to cause unwanted shift, to, un to cause unwanted incrementing of the bit index. Therefore, for the for the therefore for the I state is data, we need to delay it by half a cycle. By doing so, we avoid the bit index incrementing due to the pulse here. When we are in the data state, when we encounter a pulse, we should increment the bit index. By the way, this pulse is just the O equal delay by one cycle. However, because this pulse from the start state will also be delayed by one cycle, so it will affect the in my cause unwanted incrementing of the bit index. Therefore, this is the original shift enable that we want to use. But now, we need to eliminate the first half cycle here to avoid this pulse from causing unwanted bit index incrementing. And this is done by using the using the start state delay by half cycle. So the I state is start is one during the start state, and we delay it by half cycle. And this is the I state is data. And then we invert this step is start delay half cycle like, like this. We invert it like this. And we taking N with this signal and this signal to get this signal here. This signal is just the I step is data with the first half cycle eliminated that's why we have the reset condition like this active low reset condition and also we will be comparing this bit index with the data width minus one to know that whether we are now in the msb So when we are sending the MSB, the bit index is 7, which is the MSB. And we can out based on this bit index, based on this bit index, we can output a equal MSB logic one here. And using this MSB, we can instruct the current state. 
you can let the FSM to know when to transition from the data state to stop state. The third component is the clock counter. Since this is a clock counter, the clock for this flip-flop is just the clock. Under normal condition without the reset, the clock count is incremented by 1 during each positive edge of the clock. And the question now is when we don't want the reset to happen. The first condition is when the global reset is 1. And the second condition is when we have a equal pulse. When we look at the timing diagram, the equal pulse is output during the the during the clock counter reaches certain value, and we can delay this equal pulse by half cycle. So that during the next clock, the clock count can be reset back to zero. Since the reset is active law, we need to put a tilde sign here to negate the signal. And we also don't want the reset during during the entire duration of start until the stop during this circle state we want the counter to keep counting right however we don't want the however we don't want the increment during this we don't want to have suddenly one here and then we don't want to have the clock counter to be one here. Therefore, we need to delay the start by half, half cycle. This is the original starting of our enable, of our counting enable and we delay by half so that the clock count will not be 1 here so all together we have the expression here and this expression is this this whole step right here with the first half cycle eliminated this multiplexer is to select at what value should the clock count be reset back to zero. So when we look at the timing diagram, we have two possible values before the reset. So this 433, this 433 is put into a compilator here. And this last value here is put into this and this last value is selected during the stop bit so during the stop bit we have a longer than usual bit length the fourth component is the control unit which is made out of an fsm initially we are in the idle state as long as there is no key press, we stay in the idle state. However, when we detect a key press, we should go to the start state. And in the start state, the clock counter will start counting until 433 and it will output a pulse like this. We delay the pulse by a half cycle so that during the next as next positive as of the clock, the current state from can be changed from start to the data. This change right here. So now we are in the data state. During data state, we will encounter a few equal paths. So we will encounter quite a few of equal paths like this. 
However, what will eventually trigger the current state to transition into the stop state is when the pulse is accompanied by this M equal and SB. We'll also delay the equal name SB by half a cycle such that when during the positive edge of the clock, both of the equal and the equal MSB are one. So that when we have a positive edge, we can change the state from data to stop without any whole time violation. Now we are in the stop state. In the stop state, the counter will also still be counting. As long as we haven't reached this value, then we will still be in the stop state. However, once we reach a value, there are two possible paths. So we have reached here, right? This next bit here can be either bit or start bit. If we detect that there is key press, then we should go to the start state again to send the key press. If the key press is not pressed at all, then we just go back to the idle state. Again, for the very log code, I've already uploaded into my GitHub page. You can read the code by yourself. Uh, the, uh, the additional thing I added is the key press encoder. So in this project, we have four buttons, SDW. And when it is pressed, we will give the, when we press any one of the button, then the value of the button pressed will be loaded into the shift register. The ASCII value of the button A is 61, S is 73, and so on. And I also added the value when two buttons are pressed together. For example, when the W and A are pressed together, I will send the hashtag symbol. This hashtag symbol later on in the Python code, we will unpack this back into W and A. Same thing for this when the W and D push button are both pressed, then I'll send dollar sign so that later on when the Python code detect that we are sending dollar sign, it will unpack into W and D key. This is the this is the game controller driver written in Python. The useful a useful library for this is PyAutoGreen because it can handle the key down and key up event. And the serial port that I'm using is COM3 USB port, but red and also timeout like this. This last key is used to hold the key sent by the the last key sent by the CPLD, and this is the last key combination. Then goes for the current key. This is what we are currently placing, and this is what we are the combination key that we are pressing. This is the function. So whenever we press a key on the CPLD, we will receive either a SDW or special symbol like this, hashtag dollar sign percent and and as discussed before, when we are sending a SDW, there is nothing to unpack. But when we are sending special character like this, then the then we need to unpack it in, into the combination key. 
for example, the hashtag is equivalent to W and A key pressed together. And for the dollar sign, is equivalent to pressing W and D together. Now here is the main loop. While true, we will keep reading the serial port. And we check if if current key is not equal to the last key, then we know that there is something has to some action has to be performed. And the first thing we do is to unpack the current key accordingly. I think it's better to look at an example. The last key comb combination, let's say we press W and A. And the current key combination that we are pressing is the, let's say, A and S. So when we reach the loop here, we are checking, we are looping over the last key combination and then comparing with the current key combination. If the if we detect something that is not in the current key combination, then we will key up and then remove it from the last key combination. Else if we have something in common, then we will remove it from the current key combination. This is because later on in this block of code below, we will be comparing the current key combination against with the last key combination. And there is no use trying to compare the same thing again during this block of code. So let's look at the second comparison here. We are comparing the current key combination against with the last key combination. So in this case, for key in current key combination, which is S, we check if the key S is not in, since this S is not in the last key combination, that means this is the new key that we are pressing. Therefore, we perform a key down and append it to the last key combination. By the end of this, we have A and S. By the end of this, the last key combination will be A and S, which is what we want. And finally, we save the last key. We save the current key into the last key for future comparison. Here is the circuit diagram. This is the input A, S, D, and W. This input are active high. If you notice, this is just the conventional active high input. And this is the low pass filter to debounce the push button. And I've also added LED indicator when the push button is pressed, then the LED will light up. And this is the active law power on this set. This is the same with the UART receiver project and can be shared together as a global reset. And for the circuit board, I also added a simple LED such that when the circuit is on, the red LED, the red LED will be bright. This is the connection for the FT232 module. Again, the ground is shared between the module and the CPLD. Since this is a transmitter project, the OTX of the CPLD will be fed into the receiver, the receive the RX pin of the module. And again, VCC is not used. For those who want to play with the project, after downloading the files from the GitHub page and you create a new project using Quartus, after that, 
right click on the add file and then you add all of the file under the SDL folder. After that, search for the UART underscore project dot V, which is this code line here, which consists of UI receiver with seven segment peripheral and UART transmitter with the four push buttons. Right click and then set at top level entity. Then you do the analysis and synthesis. After that, go to pin planner and assign the pin like this. Remember that for the for any inputs with push button, this five thing right here is DW and reset. Make sure you use the Smith trigger input to better handle the noise. And then you click on the start compilation for full compilation. After the full compilation, double click on the program device, program as usual, go to the POF file, check the program, and then hardware setup, USB blaster close, and then just start programming it like usual. Here's how the project hardware looks like. This is the 9 volt battery consists of 6 AA battery 6 times 1.5 volt which is equal to 9 volt so 9 volt goes into the voltage regulator to step down to 5 volt to power up the CPLD let's turn on the power supply these two seven segments are to display the received data from the laptop to the receiver on the CPLD. And we have four buttons here, one, two, three, four, for A, S, D, and W. And we have another, another button here. This button here is the global reset. And this is the FT232 module. Next, go to the Terra term. Click on Setup, Serial Port. In my case, I'm using COM3 port. And in this project, we are using this bit. And then click OK. Now we are ready to transmit data from Terra term to the seven segment display. So now, when I press the key A, as you can see, the seven segment changed to sixty six one, which is the ASCII ASCII hexadecimal value of the key A. Now, when I press S, it changed to seven three. Press D, 6, 4, and then W is 7, 7. And we can just press any key and it will just display that. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We can even, you know, this is A. We can even send the capital. And yes, the capital is less than the 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 capital will be less than the small letter by two right this is the capital this is the normal small letter a and so on and let's test out the reset button this button right here you see, it is reset back to zero zero. When I press the key again, it's working. Reset again, it's gone. This is how the reset button works. Next, to test the push button, the transmitter in the pair term. 
without doing anything, we can just press the push button and the key press will appear in the Terra term. So for example, I'm pressing the button A. You see that it's transmitting at a constant rate of 31 characters per second. And let's test out this S button, D button, and this W button. And if we have combination like this, W and A, it is sending out the is sending out the hashtag and W and D it will send out dollar sign. If we press S and A together, it will send out the percent. If we press S and the D, it will send out the N. Now we will test the transmitter by playing game with the transmitter data from CPLD to the computer. I'm using PyCharm IDE here. So to run the code, I just right click and then click run. So as you can see, it is receiving nothing because there is no button pressed yet. Later on when we play the game, it will receive something here. Let me show you what happened when you press the key press. When I press the A, you see it is receiving A, S, D, W, combination D key, like so and so on. Now with the code still running, we will test out the transmitter by playing a game in the browser. Alright, let's test out the going forward by pressing the W key. And yeah, it worked. And press the S key for backward. Yeah, it's, it's working. If I press the A key to the left, you can see that the front wheel, you will see that the front wheel is turning to the left. Then, if I press the D key, then the right wheel will turn to the right. You see the front wheel will turn to the right like this. If I go forward and then to the left at the same time, you see it's working. And forward and also right. And you, you can see that it's working. And then backward to the left is working as well. And backward to the right. Yes, it's working. So let's actually complete this game, this level of game. Oop. Oh no. I need to park this truck into the space here. Alright. And yeah, we have completed this level using our CPLD transmitter. Basically, this transmitter works for any games that support SDW. So you can see. It's working, pressing back and to the left, it's working. And let's go. Oh, okay, it's another game that we can try. Another thing we can try is the loopback. Basically, we loopback the TX and RX together.
So let's take out these two DX and RX and connect it using using a jumper together. By the way, there will be random value on here because just now when we change the wire, there are some noise in the wire, right? Let me reset first. And when I press the A, the 6 one should appear here because the hexa value of A uh, is 6 one. So when I press this, you can see that it changed to 6 one. And the same goes for other button. This is S. S is 73 in hexadecimal. And then D is 64 in hexadecimal. W is 77 in hexadecimal. We can also try combinational key like W and A. See, when I release, it goes back to 77 because the last key I still press is W. So let me show you again. When I press the two keys together, it will send 23. And W and D is 20, is 24. And the S and A is 25. And S and D is 26. And yeah, this is all. That's all.